Hi, hello again, and here comes the second part of uh, teaching or educational material as regards business models in the industry of renewable energies. Uh, so I can just invite you to watch the first video, then uh, the one with uh, uh, the hashtag one number already available on my channel on YouTube. Here I go into the second part. So quite briefly, I will stay with the two business cases which I already signaled in the first video. So the case of two photovoltaic companies, so active in the photovoltaic solar business. One is First Solar, uh, a, a company based in the United States and essentially I think the biggest American uh, business or the biggest American business entity in the photovoltaic business. And the second one is SMA Solar based in Germany. So I will start with a quick reminder of uh, like uh, their essential business models and then I will go into like a fundamental concept at the, at the frontier of management and uh, economics, the concept of financial accounts of a business. Because at the end of the day in a business, money matters, money is important, finance is important. And I want to at least start showing in this video how businesses are being uh, let's say, estimated and gouged financially. There is a canon, there is like a pattern of uh, studying the financial stance of a company. So I start with First Solar. Give me one second to bring up the annual financial report of First Solar. Okay, good. Perfect, we are here. Let me just quick, quickly jump over the corner and let's go there. So here is the front page of the First Solar Incorporated. It is annual report pursuant to Section 13 or 15D of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 for the fiscal year ended December the 31st, 2019. Quick reminder of their business. So they describe themselves as a leading global provider of comprehensive photovoltaic solar energy solutions. Uh, we design, manufacture and sell photovoltaic solar modules with an advanced thin film semiconductor technology and also develop and sell photovoltaic solar power systems that primarily use the modules we manufacture. Additionally, we provide operations and maintenance services to, to system owners. We have substantial ongoing research and development efforts focused on various technology innovations. We are the world's largest thin film photovoltaic solar module manufacturer and one of the world's largest photovoltaic solar module manufacturers. So here in the case of face so in, in the case of first solar we have a big manufacturing business focused on one specific field of technology and the business has even developed a special technological position in that field. So in the field of manufacturing photovoltaic solar modules. Now a quick jump to the second of our business cases, so to SMA Solar. Here is their half annual report for the first half of the year 2020. I go there and I will give you a reminder of who they are, of what they do. 
So here is that quick presentation of their company. Business activity and organization, SMA Solar Technology and its subsidiaries develop, produce and sell solar and battery inverters, monitoring systems for photovoltaic systems, medium voltage technology, transformers and chokes. In addition, the company offers intelligent energy management solutions and services, including operation and maintenance services for photovoltaic power plants. Another business segment is digital services for the future energy supply. Now a little bit of reflection on those two cases. We have two very different business models in the same, in essentially the same business, in the same industry, in the industry of photovoltaic energy. Why are there different business models in the same industry? It is somehow fascinating. It is a fascinating trade of markets and industries. We humans, we develop our civilization by diversity. When one company nails down a given technology, uh, sooner or later there will be another company or another set of companies who will be devising market structures or technological platforms to market that first technology. It is something that was noticed, for example, by an American social scientist, uh, Michael Porter. He noticed that uh, in every seriously developed industry, there is like a parallel development of generalist distributors and specialized manufacturers. There are, there are like two cores in every industry. The moral of the fairy tale for the moment is when uh, we create a business model, that the business model has to fit to the environment. Uh, our business model might serve to market some kind of value or some kind of technology which already exists, or our business model can focus on developing and really making and supplying some baseline core value added, such as in the case of First Solar. Now I will go to something else, to financials. I will show you like the first type of um, financial account or the first possible financial perspective on a company, namely the capital account. Uh, so as for the capital account, let me jump back uh, to First Solar, because in their case it is slightly more comfortably shown. So I switch from the report by SMA Solar to that by First Solar. So I go to the table of contents and just I just show you how to navigate uh, through those standardized 10K forms of annual reports practiced in the United States. So here you have the table of contents of that report. And here is item 15, exhibits and financial statements schedules. I go there. And here is the consolidated balance sheets of, the, uh, of that company, of, of First Solar. I will make it slightly bigger, so I will minimize, or for the moment I will just get rid of the sidebar and make it slightly bigger to show you the phrasing of those categories. So what is the balance sheet? The balance sheet is essentially the capital account of a business. The balance sheet serves to assess how much capital a business is using and what are the essential sources of that capital. A reminder here, 
although if you watch the first video in that series you might be aware of, of that it is the notation the financial format used here so those numbers are in thousands except per share data so when you watch those numbers you should mentally add like three zeros at the end huh? and another reminder in the anglo-saxon financial format the comma is a separator of orders of magnitude so the comma separates thousands from millions millions from billions and so on the decimal point on the other hand is a point strictly speaking maybe you will see it when we will look at the and uh, at the share data so first of all the categories that you have in a capital account of the business you have assets and you have the second big category liabilities and stockholders equity assets are essentially all the things and rights that the company has as a matter of fact each of us each person has some assets the cash that you have in your wallet the money that you have available on your credit card account these are your assets because these are economic goods which you can use to create some economic value and which are like at your disposal on the other hand liabilities and stockholders equity uh, show the sources of capital used to finance the assets in short liabilities are what the company owes to third entities which is what they owe to third people it is their debt whilst equity stockholders equity is the stockholders or the shareholders own part of the assets and here comes uh, the first like important trick or an important arithmetical property of the balance sheet you can see here the category of assets and its bottom line total assets 7 billion uh, 515 million six hundred and eighty nine thousands of dollars now the sum total of liabilities and stockholders equity so total liabilities and stockholders equity is exactly the same it is seven billion five hundred and fifteen million six hundred and eighty nine thousands of dollars this is the principle which we call the principle of t account you imagine a letter t so like a leg in the middle and the roof huh? and the leg divides the space under the roof into two equal halves that's the logic of uh, the balance sheet the two sides of the balance sheet we call them sides i know that uh, in this notation that you can see here on the screen assets are above and liabilities and equity is below uh, but the let, let's say the traditional the classical way of writing them is side by side in that t account format so assets on one side and we call it the active side of the balance sheet and uh, uh, equity and liabilities on the other side and that other side equity and liabilities we call it the passive side of the balance sheet okay another uh, thing that you can notice in the assets we have a category current assets excuse me current assets mm, come on i want to highlight it properly current assets and in that category of current assets you have many subcategories such as cash and cash equivalents marketable securities inventories balance of system parts and 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 so on uh, the category of current assets or the habit of distinguishing it in the balance sheet of um, business 
is quite practical. It is an observation from practical life. When you run a business, you will notice with the time that in order to running that business properly, you need certain things, certain rights, a cer and a certain amount of cash sort of circulate in your business. It needs to sort of turn around and turn out. It is like a wheel. Those current assets can be precisely equated to a wheel that turns in order to make your business turn. Uh, on the, and uh, besides the current assets, we have all the category that is called like uh, overarchingly called non-current or fixed assets. Uh, this is another practical observation from business reality that when you run a business you will see that in order to run it properly, in order to run it uh, like profitably, you need certain fixed durable things to be installed, to be in place and to be operational. This is like buildings, equipment, machines, uh, maybe some uh, some patents, some, so some intellectual property. So in the assets of a business, you have those two parts. You have the fixed ones, so the fixture, the fixed durable things that need to be there, that need to be operational, and you have the circulating ones. Uh, so you have the assets that, uh, or the kind of things and rights that sort of need to turn around, to turn out, to circulate like a wheel in order to make the business turn. Okay, we have a quick glance at the assets of First Solar. And now uh, we will perform a quick exercise uh, that I usually, or that I commonly do with my students. Uh, when you see a list of something with a bottom line, so if you see a sum total, like a column of values, and the bottom line here. So the bottom line of First Solar's assets at the end of 2019, 7.5 billions of dollars. Now have a quick look at it and uh, tell me which numbers are the biggest ones. So which numbers in that column sort of stick out of the crowd? And you can easily notice that we have two categories. Property, plant and equipment, 2.18 billions of dollars, and cash and cash equivalents here, which amounted to 1.35 billions of dollars at the end of 2019. So the factories and the cash, these are the main assets of that business model by First Solar. Uh, by the way, it is an interesting trait of businesses which are active in industries marked by quick technological change. Technological change is accelerating uh, business-wise. And it is an observation which I made and many other scholars have made that as technological change accelerates, businesses hold more and more cash in their balance sheets. As if they wanted to be ready for a quick reaction to a growing range of alternative strategies. Okay, now I jump to the balance sheet or to the assets of SMA Solar. So we will switch views in the window. I will now go to SMA Solar's annual report and to have a quick glance at their assets. Uh, first of all, I go to the table of contents. In the table of contents, you can see half-year consolidated financial statements here. 
So income statement, statement of comprehensive income and balance sheet. So the type of, uh, of financial account that uh, we are interested in right now. It is page 20 of the PDF. Let's go there. Yes. We have here that balance sheet of the SMA group. By the way, uh, in the case of the balance sheet, it doesn't really matter if the financial report we are reading is a quarterly one, a semi-annual one or an annual one. Because the balance sheet shows simply how much capital does the company have at a given moment. So it is like a quick picture of the business at, uh, or of the capital base of the business at a given moment. Uh, so in this respect, we can perfectly compare a balance sheet for half a year with a balance sheet for a full year. It doesn't matter. So here we have those assets divided into those two categories, non-current, so the fixed ones, and the current ones, which are here. Huh? Uh, by the way, here you can see a different format of presentation. The general name of the category, like non-current assets, is below the list of all the non-current assets. Same for the current ones. The total assets of uh, SMA Solar are given here. This is this number here, which I am trying to show in the center of the screen. So 991,775,000 of euro. So it is roughly speaking like 1.2, maybe 1.3 billion of American dollars. So roughly speaking, in terms of the capital base, uh, SMA Solar is maybe six times smaller uh, than the first solar. Uh, in my first video on business models in renewable energies, I compared those two companies by their income, so by the value of their sales. Now I am comparing their size uh, by, with the size or with the respective sizes of their capital base. Okay, so he here we have those two. Maybe I will get rid of the sidebar to have a better view. And once again, we play the same game as we played with first solar. So we have the sum total, the bottom line, 991,775,000 of euro. And now we uh, try to guess uh, what is the or which categories of assets stick out the most, like out of, of, of the crowd. Here we have the full list. Huh? And what are the biggest numbers in that list? First of all, you have that category, inventories, 285. And you have that category, fixed assets, 207. Cash is like at, at the third place. It is this, 135.594. So, in this case, the business model capital-wise or asset-wise is based on fixed assets, so something roughly equivalent to that property, plant and equipment in the case of the first, of, uh, first solar, and on inventories. Inventories which uh, were relatively less important in the business of first solar. In a moment we'll have a quick glance at how important exactly they are. 
So we have that subtle difference. In the, in the case of First Solar, we have a business model based on factories and a large amount of cash. And in the case of SMA Solar, we have a business model based on factories and um, a large amount of inventories. By the way, for those of you who are not familiar with the concept of inventories, inventories are goods that we have in stock in our warehouses in the business. Inventories are made, first of all, of the raw materials and components that we buy from external suppliers and hold in reserve. And secondly, inventories are made of our own products, of what we make and manufacture, just stored temporarily before it is sold to our customers. So this is a quick glance at the active side of the balance sheet. Now let's go to the passive side. Let's see the basic distinctions that we can see there. So liabilities and equity. Equity, uh, by the way, we remember that general rule that the sum total of equity and liabilities has to be rigorously equal to the sum total of assets. So when we look at that uh, passive side of the balance sheet, we keep in mind that sum total, 9917.757, uh, excuse me. In that sum total, on the passive side of the balance sheet, so in the total equity and liabilities, there are three chunks distinguished. L equity, SMA Solar Technology AG share, shareholders equity, so like their own money in the business, uh, 417986. The second chunk are non-current liabilities or non-current debt. Non-current means that this debt or these liabilities are to be paid uh, over a period longer than one year, longer than 12 months. And finally, we have current liabilities, so all the kinds of debt that are uh, that is payable in a period of time shorter than one year, or shorter than 365 days. And if we have a quick look at this list of equity components and liabilities, the biggest single figure that sticks out of the list is this, 264086, and this is retained earnings. So the net profits made by the company in the past years and retained in the business, not paid out to owners, to shareholders. The second biggest category are contract liabilities, so debts, non-current debts, which result from comprehensive contracts signed by the company with some external suppliers. We jump now to the passive side of the balance sheet in First Solar or with First Solar and we play the same game. We try to identify the two single most important categories on the passive side to see how that business model plays out uh, as it comes to the sources of financing. In the case of SMA Solar we could see that the two most important sources that provide the capital for the business are retained earnings. So those guys made a lot of profit in the past and they retained that profit in the business. And finally, they sign contracts, comprehensive contracts, which allow them to like borrow money on the long term uh, in the form of non-current liabilities. And these are the two primary primary sources of financing for that business. Okay, I will shift now to First Solar and we will perform the same mental game with the First Solar. Mm 
Okay, I go to their balance sheet. I jump quickly over the corner of the presentation and let's swing. So I pass by the assets and then I go to liabilities and stockholders equity. I will make it slightly smaller to fit it to fit everything in like in one screen. So we have the total, we remember in the case of first solar the total capital base is this 7.5 billions of dollars. And now we play that game of nailing down two biggest figures. Uh, and uh, so the the, more, the the two single biggest figures in that column which uh, suggest what is the main source of financing that whole thing. And here it sticks out very clearly. We have two big numbers. 2.8 billions of dollars which correspond to additional paid-in capital and you have the second big figure 2.3 billions of dollars which is accumulated earnings. So in, uh, in, in short this business, the business of First Solar, is financed primarily from those two sources. One source is additional paid-in capital. I explain you the context. When you form a company, when you incorporate a business, you can adopt a financial strategy where at the moment of incorporation the shareholders pay just a relatively small amount of equity into the business, just to start. And then they pay in additional portions of capital as the business grows, especially in the case of companies which are supposed to go quickly into the public stock market, to go listed in the stock market. So companies which expect to attract a lot of money, a lot of capital from completely external investors by the intermediary of the stock market, there that additional paid in capital grows like really in importance. And we can see that in the case of First Solar, that additional paid in capital is the biggest single source of financing the assets. So now accumulated earnings, once again accumulated profits from the past. Now if we go back to what I have shown you just a few minutes ago as regards the first solar and their capital base, we have certainly one common denominator in those two photovoltaic businesses. It is the high importance, the great importance of accumulated earnings or retained earnings from past years in the capital base of those companies. They both, although they are different in terms of technologies, they are different in terms of general business structure, they share that common trait that at some point in time they make a lot of money in terms of net profit after tax and they decide to retain that money in the balance sheet, in the business, in order to enlarge their capital base. Okay, that would be all in this video. So you have just watched the second video in the series devoted to business models in the industry of renewable energies. Well, as usually, uh, in the conclusion of my videos, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Bye.